quote, there is no evidence of savage advocating or inciting violence, close quote. So one of their own researchers found that to be that there was no evidence of savage advocating or inciting violence, close quote. My lawyer then says, no, notwithstanding this information, you agreed to publish the press release, which stated expressly that our clients sought to provoke criminal acts. So why did they go ahead with this when they knew that it was false? I will read you further emails from Band in Britain and my lawyer's letter of yesterday. We will tie it into the lies we are hearing coming out of Scotland about releasing the Lockerbie bomber. And I will show you that it was purely mot motivated purely on political grounds. Them banning Michael Savage was purely because I am a nationalist, I am a conservative, and I am outspoken. 1-800-449-8255 or go to michaelsavage.com to see Band in Britain. I'll be right back. Savage. On the air, online, and on the go, this is Talk 910 KNEW. Beg your indulgence, and I will ask my audience right now, my dear audience, whether or not you wish me to continue with this case, which is consuming me, because I will free my name, if I can, with your help, with your help I will, and with the publicity that you're going to help me get by circulating the book Band in Britain. You're going to make this cause and this case as important as it should be. And I, I beg your indulgence, because it's consuming me. One of their own emails says there is no evidence that Savage advocated or incited violence. Yet they went ahead and published a press release which stated expressly that Savage did psych, uh, seek to provoke criminal acts. Uh, you know, you can read all this on my website, but most of you, you know, are listening to a radio show in a car or whatever. The bottom line is another email that we found says that by putting Savage on the list, it would, quote, help to provide a balance of types of exclusion cases. You know, I read this this morning. When I got it, I felt as though I was reading uh, documents that had been discovered in the archives of the Third Reich, something in the rubble of uh, Hitler's bunker. I thought that I was looking at something not from England, the country I've always admired and loved. I've always been an Anglophile. I still admire the British people. I pray to God that they wake up before it's too late. But when I saw these these clinically efficient little snotty emails going back and forth between these these people these people who went to public schools and apparently never worked a day in their lives these trust fund cases who were given these jobs because of family connections I was shocked by the clinical efficiency of their emails one says to the other like a schoolboy I will hold down the fort while you are away hold down the fort your grandfather might have held down the fort but my friend you're not holding down the fort. You listed a man who's innocent with terrorists and murderers because you don't like his politics and because he's loud and because he's vociferous and because he's offensive and because he's shocking. Winston Churchill said that it is shocking speech that should be protected. I've told you a thousand times on this show, polite speech does not need protection. Polite speech does not need a First Amendment. In fact... The European Union itself has a code about free speech, which says, which says that shocking speech itself must be maintained as legal. You understand this? New York, Frank, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, uh, Michael. You know, I've been outraged since this whole thing began against you. I'm further outraged by the, uh, the lack of media response and the alleged representatives that have completely... It's unbelievable to me. I can't understand... How the legislation, the legislators in America, not one of them has picking up, picking this case. How is it possible? No, it's a complete disgrace, quite frankly. And to be honest with you, I mean, you're exposing the tyranny, and I'm glad you're spending so much time. But my biggest outrage is the fact that you're compared to a terrorist. I mean, I'm a 9-11 firefighter, survived that, and one of my partners, his mother, father, and pregnant sister were killed on that flight. And Which, wait, on the Lockerbie flight, you mean that the terrorist was was released to Libya today? Absolutely. And then, All right, so how do you feel with him coming home to a hero's welcome? Compassion that this man had left in his heart. Today, I can't imagine the pain he's going through. 
I mean, he's a shell of a human being. And the fact that you were ever compared on any level or they, they draw parallels to you, who you only speak of conservative values, whether they disagree or not, I mean... This is a tyranny of the absolute... Frank, it is a tyranny. It's fascism. That's what I've been screaming about now for months, trying to get my name off the list. They won't let it go. They know they're liars. They know they shouldn't have put me on the list. Their own email says I was in a, say I'm innocent, that I didn't commit any crimes, and they went ahead and did this anyway. They crucified me, but they only put one spike in one hand, and I still have a free hand and two free feet. Savage. Michael Savage. Afternoons 3 to 7 on Talk 910 KNEW and online at 910KNEW.com. Coming up next from San Fran Freak Show, The Savage Nation from Talk 910 KNEW. On the air, online, and on the go, this is Talk 910 KNEW. Warning. The Michael Savage Show contains adult language. Adult content. Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Here is Michael Savage. Savage Nation is now in session. The Honorable Judge Michael Savage presiding. All rise. Yeah, all rise. You're the only thing I've got in this world for justice. I have nobody in the media. I have nobody in the Republican Party. I have nobody in the government that will uh, help me get off the list of murderers and terrorists. And yet, and yet the compassionate British government in Scotland has released a uh, terrorist who was the mastermind of Lockerbie, who was in prison for having masterminded blowing up the Pan Am flight and killing hundreds of people. And the judge who released him said he did so out of compassion and mercy. Listen to uh, clip three now, please. For these reasons, and these reasons alone, it is my decision that Mr. Abdel Basset Ali Mohamed Al Megrahi, convicted in 2001 of the Lockerbie bombing now terminally ill with prostate cancer, be released on compassionate grounds and are allowed to return to Libya to die. Well, he went home not to die, but to enjoy a hero's welcome and to be a role model and a mentor to the next generation of terrorists, apparently. Even Obama said that they shouldn't have done it. Even Obama said it was a mistake. Listen to Obama in clip five, you liberals. We, we have wanna, been in wait, wait, hold on. You, you liberals who want to gang up on me and say one thing has nothing to do with another. You liberals who want to condemn me and crucify me. Listen to Obama. We, we have been in contact with the Scottish government uh, in, indicating uh, that we objected to this. And uh, we thought it was a mistake. Uh, we're now in contact with the Libyan government and want to make sure that... Uh, if, in fact, this transfer has taken place, that uh, he's not welcomed back uh, in some way, but instead should be under house arrest. All right, let's stop right there. So Obama was opposed to releasing a Lockerbie bomber, so he says. I'm not so sure I believe it, number one. I believe he's uh, doing damage control. I believe that somebody in the State Department definitely was consulted. Would be my opinion. Somebody from Scotland went to uh, one of the people in our nanny state and asked them what they think and they said sure go ahead release them after all we're now talking to kim jong-il we're talking to amana jad we want to make nice to libya sure release them go ahead and then all of a sudden the blowback came at them and suddenly obama's stepping and saying it was a mistake so maybe he didn't know about it but i'm sure somebody in the state department did know about it in advance now we go back to michael savage being banned in britain they won't release my name even though they've been shown to be uh, they made a mistake they say they have compassion and mercy how about with me so they have compassion and mercy for a radical Muslim terrorist, but no compassion and mercy for a right-wing, conservative, American talk show host 
who believes in borders, language, and culture. In their emails, we found the following, and this is the most important one for you to listen to. Here's my lawyer says in an email between the Home Office time to 1248 and 27 November 08, that there had been discussion within the Home Office that disclosure of the decision to exclude Savage would, quote, help provide a balance of types of of exclusion cases. Balance of types? What do they mean by that? Oh, I see. They're going to balance it so they put in a white man, conservative nationalist, to make it not look like they're worried about the Muslim extremists amongst them. You see? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll rest not my case, but for the moment I'm not going to read any more about what they did to me. But the fact is that in their press release they said that I am an individual who would glorify terrorist violence. This is the very same government that just had a sister government in Scotland release an actual murderer and terrorist. 